Hello, I'm Diane Lee from Hanyang University. Today, I'm going to talk about large-scale laboratory experiments and numerical modeling of wave force and pressure acting on the urban structures. Before I start the presentation, I'll be talking about the overall outline related to research. This is a multi-institutional project from different universities. This project was for the impact of wind waves and tsunami on simplified coastal city. We set up the baseline configurations and each PI used their own setup on that. And we conduct the sewer and submerged breakwater experiment. Our research is the overland flow experiment over the entire city area because in 2016, the severe typhoon attacked Busan, the second largest city in South Korea. This area has high-story buildings near the coast, so the government wanted to construct hard structures to protect the apartment. So we joined the project because the experimental setup was perfect for our case. Physical experiments were carried out at Oregon State University's Directional Wave Basin, by 1 over 20 scale. This is our experimental setup. We made submerged breakwater and sewer in each case, like these above figures. And there are plan and profile view indicating instrumentation, including wire, res resistance wave gauges, ADBs, and ultrasonic wave gauges. Also, 100 idealized structures representing a coastal urban array were positioned on the basimetry. Each structure had 40 cm dimensions and the, in the longshore and crossshore directions. So, to tell you more about the equipment, one 6 degree of freedom roster and five horizontal rosters were installed on the box type structure. And on two structures in both sides, we installed six pressure sensors at each building. Also, there are four different configurations, including baseline, thermos breakwater only, sewer only, and sewer and thermos breakwater like that. Even if this experiment was done for storm wave, like regular and random wave, only tsunami condition without currents is going to be focused today. We classified cases into three groups for effective analysis with two different water depths and wave height. And today, I'm gonna compare the results of only case 1 and 3, which are same wave height and different water depths. Each case includes four different configurations. This is an example of data processing in a tsunami case. And then, water surface elevation was measured in front of first building row in four configurations. Both SB and SW case can dramatically reduce cross-shore elevation ex exerted in first building arrays. But in the case 3, with high water level and high, water, high tsunami height, Elevation measured in SB is even larger than baseline. These two figures show the maximum water surface elevations at ultrasonic wave gauge 1, 5, 7, and 8. X is the distance from ultrasonic wave gauges to shoreline, and L is the distance from shoreline to 10th building row. Generally, elevations measured at SW is smaller than these at SB. In case 1, with low water level and high tsunami height, there are significant differences between magnitudes of elevations. However, in case 3, with high water level and high tsunami height, there are little differences in reducing tsunami elevation magnitudes except first reading low. In this case, the time series of horizontal force measured at first reading low is shown. The case 3, large, large impulse forces or slamming forces were captured in SB and SWSB cases. Like what you see here, in the higher water level, the submerged breakwater may generate impulsive forces. So, 
countermeasures may generate larger impressive forces than baseline. In the array from first to second, tsunami forces reduce dramatically. But from second to last array, forces decrease gradually. In case 1, SWSB case shows the smallest tsunami force. But in case 3, there are large impressive forces in SB and SWSB. SB in large tsunami condition may amplify water surface elevation and then directly break in front of first building low. Therefore, SB may adversely impact on coastal communities in this case. And this is the percent reduction in tsunami force in first building row and maximum reduction. In case 3, the trend seen in case 1 did not appear because of slamming. We also tried to validate the numerical model using the experimental results. The Olaf flow was used in our research which is developed from ice foam. Olaf flow has a piston and flat type wave pedal generation and a set of boundary conditions for generating and absorbing waves at the boundary to reduce computational expense. The numerical model setup in this work is in this table. The mesh size is reduced from 10 cm at offshore to almost 1 cm around the structures. The current number was set to 0.5 and K-omega SST turbulent model was used in this case. And let me show you the Olaf flow simulation and experimental videos. The case 1 SWSB and case 3 SB. The numerical model results can show the wave transformation over the submerged breakwater similar to the experiments. Also, this is the top view animation of case 1 SWSB. After that, what you see here is the validation of numerical results. First, the offshore wave gauge and ultrasonic wave gauges of case 1 SB. Sure. Then, pressure gauges. Pressure sensor 1 is located at the very bottom part of structure, and pressure sensor 6 is on the highest level. And the numerical results of horizontal force is in excellent agreement with measurements, except load cell 3. Uh, this part is still under analysis. The load cell 1 is in here, and 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Interestingly, it was observed that there are some fluctuations in the results of load cell 4 to 6. And the detailed simulation was confirmed like that. In there, reflected waves hit the structures after the previous wave hit. Next, there are the validations of force in case 1 as WSB. Finally, this is the validation of case 1 as W. As expected, it is also in a good agreement with measurement data. But in case 3 as B, because it is a rigid body in the numerical model, the slamming force didn't appear. But experimental results show very large slamming force in this case because the structure is not perfectly rigid. Sure. And we can see the similar results in case 3, SWSB. But slamming didn't occur in, a, in the physical experiment of sewer case either. Therefore, we can see that numerical model cannot reproduce the slamming force. But without that, overall the numerical model results agree well with the experimental results except the slamming force. And then, this is the animation of two cases with different water depths in SB case. To be sure, the effect of submerged breakwater decreased as the water level increased. Like that. 
In this study, we conducted the urban flow experiment to investigate the force and pressure on the urban structures. Regular random and tsunami waves were generated in SB, SW, and SWSB cases. In case 1, maximum force reduction in SWSB was from 38% to 82% during traveling time in coastal building areas. However, in case 3, there were significant impressive forces in SB and SWSB case. Also, the validation of numerical modeling for physical experiment was conducted. The numerical model have nicely reproduced overall, but the slamming force couldn't, could not be reproduced because it is a rigid body in the numerical model. In further research, Force, pressure, and hydronomics will be analyzed in regular and regular waves, and numerical model validation will be performed. Thank you for listening, and special thanks to everyone who helped me with the research. I want to thank all professors for allowing me to join this project. And special thanks to Professor Cox for making thermal breakwater and sewer. Also, I sincerely thank Adam Keen to help me with installing instruments.